Welcome to Electro Online. In the previous videos, we saw that we can actually find a fair number of integrals by knowing the inverse hyperbolic functions. And we realized that the integral of 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1 dx is equal to the inverse hyperbolic sine of x plus some constant of integration. And since, as we saw in some previous videos, that the inverse hyperbolic sine of x can be equal to this, we can then say that this integral can then be defined as the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And of course, plus a constant of integration. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sign, which of course is defined as the natural log of the quantity x plus the square root of x squared plus 1, and then show you that by taking the derivative, we can then see that this is the integral that we can then solve by using the inverse hyperbolic sign. So stay tuned and you'll see what I mean with that. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of this, which is really the same thing as taking the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sign. So to take the derivative of the natural log that is equal to 1 over the quantity in the parentheses, that would be x plus the square root of x squared plus 1, times the derivative of that, and the derivative that would be, let's see here, that would be 1 plus, and then the derivative of this would be 1 half times x squared plus 1 to the minus 1 half power times the derivative of what's inside, that would be times 2x. And now all we have to do is simplify that. So this becomes equal to 1 over x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And then here, notice that the 2 here and the 2 there cancel out. And so we end up with a 1, so that would be times 1 plus, in the numerator we end up with an x, and in the denominator we end up with the square root of x squared plus 1. Now we're going to take what's in the parentheses here and write that over a common denominator because we want to simplify this expression, so this becomes 1 over x plus the square root of x squared plus 1 times, and here this becomes the square root of x squared plus 1 divided by the square root of x squared plus 1 plus x divided by the square root of x squared plus 1. And now you can see that this is written over a common denominator, so essentially we can get rid of that and get rid of the plus sign. And then notice that here in the numerator we have an x, in the denominator we have an x plus the square root of x squared plus 1, and we're going to get the same thing in the numerator over there. So this becomes equal to 1 over x plus the square root of x squared plus 1, and that times, and here we end up with, and I can reverse the order, x plus the square root of x squared plus 1, all divided by the common denominator of the square root of x squared plus 1. And now you realize that this here will cancel out with this, and you can see then that the ddx, the derivative with respect to x of the inverse hyperbolic sine of x, is indeed equal to what we have 1 divided by that, 1 divided by the square root of x squared plus 1. And then we realize if the derivative of this is equal to that, then the integral of this must be equal to this. So therefore we can say the integral of 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1 times dx must be equal to the inverse hyperbolic sine of x plus of course a constant integration. And since this is equal to the natural log, then this integral can be evaluated by evaluating the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And so as you see, those inverse hyperbolic functions can be very useful, and especially if you can go back and forth, if you can actually calculate the hyperbolic sign and show them what they're equal to, and then take the derivative of the hyperbolic sign, and then notice there's a relationship between this and the integral of the derivative. And that's how it's done, and that's why these hyperbolic functions can actually be useful.